In the world of 3D printing, there are tons of different options for 3D print settings. But what settings will give us the highest strength to weight ratio? In this video, we're going to see which type of infill is the strongest. We're also going to see whether it's better to increase infill percentage or the number of walls in a print. The whole point of this video series is to collect data and organize it into useful knowledge so we can better understand the world of 3D printing. To carry out this experiment in the most scientific way possible, I built this testing rig. And all the tests have been done in a climate controlled area with consistent temperature. I use the same type of 3D printer filament for each test. There are a million and one different ways to carry out this experiment, but I'll do my best to remove any confounding variables. Let's start by testing how the number of walls affects the strength of a 3D print. It's also important to note this test is for this specific geometry, a 10mm by 10mm beam. The setup is a slight variation of a simply supported beam with a downward force applied to the center of the beam. In no way are the results from these experiments conclusive. But in the words of Immanuel Kant, science is organized knowledge, and in these experiments we're gaining and organizing knowledge. 3D printed objects are not printed solid. The part on the left has two walls, the middle has four walls, and the right side has eight walls. So let's see how the number of walls affects the part strength. Here is two walls. If we slow the recording down, we can see it held 74.2 kilograms. And now we just have to do the same test going all the way up to eight walls. I conducted this experiment twice using two different types of filament. First, Sunlu PLA Plus, and second, Bamboo Lab PLA Basic. And here we could see the results. Right here in this column, we have the results for Sunlu PLA Plus, and here we have the results for Bamboo Lab PLA Basic. In general, the Bamboo Lab PLA Basic was slightly weaker than the Sunlu PLA Plus. And in this column right here, we have the average strength. But what's the important thing in our experiment? Well, we want to figure out the strength to weight ratio. And we could do that just by simply dividing the strength right here by the weight of each beam. So we can see the strength to weight ratio increases as we increase the number of walls. This graph here shows the strength increases linearly. So you'd expect your 3D printed parts to get consistently stronger with every wall you add. However, the strength to weight ratio appears to be a logarithmic graph. So there are diminishing returns when it comes to the strength to weight ratio. Something else I found interesting with this test was that the Bamboo Lab PLA parts did not snap completely. Compare those results to the Sunlu PLA Plus, which appears to be more brittle. So now we have a good amount of data showing how 3D printed parts get stronger as you increase the number of walls. But what about increasing infill? So here are the results as you increase the infill percentage. The parts do definitely get stronger. However, the results appear to be inconsistent. And this can be solved by doing a greater number of tests. The main results are very interesting here. So the strength to weight ratio actually decreases as you increase the infill percentage. So it's less economical to increase the infill percentage to get stronger parts. But we live in a world where we don't have to choose between infill percentage or the number of walls. You might be thinking, why not test both? And if we combine the results from both of these tests, we could find the optimal percent infill and number of walls. It's where these two lines intercept. And from these two graphs, we can see the optimal infill percentage is around 20% and the optimal number of walls is around three. And that's if you want to maximize the strength to weight ratio. But these tests were all conducted using grid infill. What about all the other types of infill? Which one is the strongest? Here are the different types of infill. We have concentric, rectilinear, grid, line, cubic, triangles, trihexagon, gyroid, honeycomb, adaptive cubic, aligned rectilinear, 3D honeycomb, Hilbert curve, Archimedean chords, octogram spiral, and support cubic. They honestly all look really cool together, but which one is the strongest? Let's go ahead and test and find out. So 
So here's how everything looks after the test and let's see the results. Coming in last place, we have Octogram, Spiral, and Archimedean Chords. There's probably a reason why you don't hear of people using these very often. They both have a strength to weight ratio under three. Between 3 and 3.5 strength to weight ratio, we have trihexagon, Hilbert curve, aligned rectilinear, and support cubic. Between 3.5 and 4 strength to weight ratio, we have triangles, honeycomb, line, concentric, rectilinear, grid, cubic, adaptive, cubic, and 3D honeycomb. Interesting here because we have grid and cubic, which are the two most popular infills. They both have a strength to weight ratio of around 3.7 to 3.8. Now coming in first and second place, we have a lightning infill and gyroid. Now it's really interesting that lightning infill comes in first since it's stereotypically the weakest uh, infill. And the only reason I think it got first place is because it makes the part super light. So most of the strength is coming from the walls. And in second place, we have gyroid. And third place, we have 3D honeycomb. And this makes sense because honeycombs are hexagons and we have 3D hexagons basically, which I guess is very strong, coming in at 3.94 for the strength to weight ratio. Once again, these results are far from conclusive, but we're adding more data to our data set and gaining more knowledge. So what do you think? Should 3D honeycomb be used over grid or cubic? Is it the most underrated infill type? If you like this type of video, please let me know in the comment section below. My name is Steven. Thanks for watching and happy printing.